Welcome to Last Epoch Explained. There is a system in Last Epoch called the Mastery System, and these are subclasses available to pick from each class once you reach about level 15, which is going to be about one to two hours your first time playing. And I can guarantee that there's at least one mastery in the game that you will love, that fits your playstyle, that fits who you are as a person and your persona. And in this video, we're going to go over the nuances of the Mastery System and its relationship with the Passive Tree System in Last Epoch. So let's get into it. Now after finishing a certain quest line and coming to the literal end of time, we will talk to this man and he will give us an option to choose a mastery. Now you'll notice that I have passive points allocated into three different passive trees. Now this is a uniqueness and a nuanced system in Last Epoch where you have access to the first half of each mastery passive tree of which for each class there will be three upon release that you can allocate whatever passive points you have into and then you also have access to the second half of whichever mastery that you end up choosing as well as the full base class passive tree. Now once you choose a mastery you can see here in the passive bonus areas and these are extremely large and effective power spikes that will allow you to steamroll the rest of the campaign and make your way into the end game easy breezy. You can also notice here that as soon as you pick a mastery, you'll gain access to that mastery's signature skill. On this character, I picked the Shaman Mastery. In the case of Shaman, we have the Summon Storm Totem. And you'll see here the passive bonus is minus 5 totem mana cost plus 10 attunement, plus 50% elemental resistance while you control a totem. And because I'm playing a totem build, I will always be controlling a totem, so I essentially count this as plus 50% elemental resistance permanently. Now, even within a single mastery, there are going to be multiple archetypes of builds that you can make. If we zoom in on a single skill, we can see here that we can have a sort of cold storm totem build as opposed to just a regular electric totem build. And the game helps you identify this quickly at a glance from this screen by these icons adjacent to the skills themselves. In the case of Earthquake, you can see here it has the red fist, which means that it's baseline physical skill, but it also has the fire icon, meaning we can zoom in on this and understand that there will be fire synergies within the skill tree. And here it is. The Cataclysm skill node. Earthquake's base damage is converted to fire damage. Now, this is amazing. If you want to play a fire based earthquake build. Now, that kind of system pervades throughout the entirety of the game and then also complemented by the several archetypes within each passive tree itself. In the case of this build, I wanted to make use of the Eternal Storm passive, which makes my totems stack up a lot of damage within a single fight is effectively what this node does as long as I kill a frozen enemy. Now in order to freeze more enemies, I wanted to get more frostbite chance because that increases a unit's chance to be frozen based off of how many frostbite debuff stacks that they currently have. And so you can see I put 20 points into the druid passive tree just to be able to get this one 5 point bonus passive that will give me a base frostbite chance and give all my minions, which totems count as minions, a base frostbite chance as well. And without this 5 point bonus, my frostbite chance would be very minimal and I'd have to invest a lot more in order to get the same amount of frostbite chance for the build. It's extremely efficient to get these five passive nodes right here as opposed to simply just using 56 passive points in the shaman tree. Now some starter nodes are more useful than others for certain archetypes and you can see here in the Beastmaster passive tree that a lot of these passive nodes aren't so useful for a frost totem build. They're very useful for companion physical builds and melee builds as well. And so simply for that reason alone I don't have any points allocated into this tree because it's not as synergistic as the druid and the shaman trees are for frost totem builds specifically. As you can imagine the possibilities for min maxing and mixing and master each of these passive trees is going to be extremely important in the process of making a strong character. But it's not just important, it's extremely fun. Because a lot of these passive points give unique effects even if you just put a single point into them or if you put certain amounts of points into them. Again, like the River Spirits passive after I put five points into it. Now, as a quick example of what the cornerstone of this build specifically is, I noticed that the Maelstrom skill had this node in particular that makes it deal more damage when cast on a totem. Now Maelstrom is a cold damage over time skill that scales off of attunement. And so I thought in conjunction with the blizzard part of the storm totem skill that these two could work to great effect. 
but they weren't really freezing enemies all that well. And so I noticed that the Thorn Totem has a base physical damage conversion to cold damage, as well as a way to make it freeze more often that scales off of my attunement. So I utilize Thorn Totems to freeze enemies, and I utilize Storm Totems in order to deal large amounts of damage. And I do all of this in order to enable the Eternal Storm passive node in the Shaman Tree. Now that's just one example of a build that doesn't utilize any uniques currently within one archetype of dozens, within one mastery of three, within one class of five, showcasing that there are an endless amount of builds that you can customize to your liking in a straightforward fashion that's enjoyable and makes sense. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Last Epoch Explained and I'll see you in the next one.